Well, today I'm going to be getting ready to recast a composition roller. This is for a Kelsey Brayer. It's about a six inch wide roller. And this is the core, or this is one of the cores. I have two cores. And the core fits in the holes like this. And then there's a couple of cotter pins that go through holes here and here. And that supposedly keeps it from sliding too far. So far, that comes out like this. Now, this particular core has got rounded ends, and it's a wee bit short, so it might need some washers behind the uh, the cotter pins before it gets reinstalled. Now, these were covered with composition before. This is the material here. Um, it got kind of hard. For the, for the owner. So uh, it's all been pulled off in pieces. It's got a bit of dirt on it, but hopefully that can be cleaned out. I'm going to try and reuse this composition. There's two rollers worth in the bag here. And I have one little sample that I cut out just to have a look at it. And if you look at the color in the cross section, you can sort of see that the outside has got a dark band in it. I don't know if that shows up on the camera. If it, well, it's not going to focus. I can put in a still shot later. So to cast it, I've got a mold here. It happens to be one and a quarter inch ABS drain pipe, which is just the right diameter for what these rollers should be. And that diameter, I've now forgotten it, is one and three eighths inches. Now a pipe like this isn't guaranteed to be perfectly round and perfectly smooth. It looks like a nice mirror finch when you look at it but you can also see irregularities and if I measure the diameter here it's off by 10 or 20 thousandths of an inch. So you might, this might be not accurate enough for a press roller but it should be good enough for a hand brayer. Uh, in addition I've made these two end plugs for the mold out of high density polyethylene and this one here is the right diameter to slide through here and it's got a hole a half inch deep to hold the end of the rod and it fits in one end and then I would fill the thing up and put this other one on which has a hole to keep the rod centered and also a little vent hole here so that if I've overfilled the mold the, the liquid can come out. And in theory once it's all set I can just push the whole thing out this way. From this end push the whole thing out and have it come out. So whatever I apply to the inside of the mold here before casting has to not only be a mold release which just stops the composition from sticking to the mold but it also has to act as a lubricant to allow the, the finished roller to slide out without getting torn by dragging too much. So the, the first step in any roller like this is uh, to wrap some cord around it because the, the composition material doesn't really have any adhesion to metal. So by putting this here that prevents the, the, the composition from rotating on the shaft and also prevents it from sliding or shrinking lengthwise. So I tried to get the ends of this rope as close to the end of what's going to be cast as possible. And this is actually a hemp cord. And it's just got a, a simple knot at each end to hold it on. So to get ready for casting, this, this mold is custom made just for these rollers. So it's got even the holes in the end caps are just the right length. So I put that in there, that loads in there, and it pushes in until it's flush at the bottom, like that. You see that? Yeah. And then, well before doing that I would apply my mold release and lubricant to the outside of the tube. I put this here and I would fill it up slightly higher than it needs to go. I put this cap on, push it down and the excess still molten composition would come out of this hole and perhaps squirt me in the eye. But in any case, I would then leave that to rest like that till it cools. I'd probably even put it in the fridge. Now I have to get around to uh, remelting this stuff and maybe filtering it because there's little bits of dried ink or something on the surface. It just There's little pits and cavities in here which composition rollers almost always have a few and they collect dirt in the form of dried ink or paper fibers or just general dust. 
and I'd rather not have that in, incorporated into my new roller. So I'm probably going to try and pass this through some sort of uh, filter, maybe some cheesecloth or something, once it's molten. Of course, then I'll probably have to reheat it again to get it up to a good casting temperature. Uh, you want it to be warm enough when it's cast that it doesn't harden as you're pouring it because that would tend to uh, trap some bubbles easier and also it might show sort of flow marks in it. Uh, so you want it to all stay molten until it's completely full and capped and all done and you can let, just let it rest. On the other hand, if it's too hot, it might wash away some of your mold release. So, we'll have to see how that works out. Now I have a Shore A durometer tester, and this stuff is actually too soft for that. It almost feels like the probe is, is going to punch a hole in it. Uh, there's actually a, a Shore, I don't know if it's double zero or double O, I've seen it designated both ways, which is for even softer materials. And apparently that's a more, more reasonable uh, scale for using this, but I haven't splurged yet on getting another durometer. Well, it turns out that melting the old rollers was pretty much a total disaster. When I melted it, it basically turned to a lumpy glob, not rather than a, than a nice smooth liquid. Uh, I tried heating it up to almost boiling point, and I tried adding extra water, and the best I ended up with was sort of a lumpy soup once I added quite a bit of water. Uh, I strained the hot composition in a sieve, I let the liquid harden in a cup, and after hardening, I've got a piece like this. I've taken a quarter of it away, and it has been drying ever since and slowly shrinking. Unfortunately, in the meantime, it's got these little moldy bits on it, little black spots. So this stuff has too much water in it, and it's going moldy as well, so I can't really use it. Anyway, it uh, seems that the surface from the roller wouldn't melt. The, the inner core of the roller would melt okay, but not the surface. I spoke to David Hauser about this, he's a Tar Heel roller, and he said he's observed the same effect, that the outer layers of the rollers just don't seem to melt. So, no matter the cause of this, basically the outside part of the rollers, which is also the part that gets hard and means you have to replace them, uh, just doesn't seem to dissolve. Anyway, David was kind enough to send me this nice big bag of fresh composition material. Uh, they don't actually cast composition rollers anymore there but he does have the material in stock. And I'll be using that to remake the rollers. Uh, in the meantime, I'm curious about how much uh, of, the co of the rollers I had actually did melt down versus how much was wasted. And because of all the water I added, I couldn't just weigh things as they were. So what I did is I took this piece that hardened dry, solidified in the measuring cup, and I cut it in four, and I put one piece in this laboratory balance on a piece of foil, and I've been watching the weight as it dries ever since, over a period of about um, two weeks now, actually. And as the weight decreases, and even as I'm here talking, you might see the scale go down by, there it went from uh, 300 to 200 micrograms. Not much of a change, but it is gradually drying out. And by charting that rate at which it dries, I can figure out that what I had here roughly amounts to 80 grams of properly hydrated composition. And that's about one-third of the original 250 grams I started with. So I got about a third of the stuff to melt properly and the rest was not behaving. Anyway, I'm going to have a, a blog post on Paper Trail blog sometime explaining the math behind this calculation. So, um, I'll have to see how the casting goes with this fresh stuff instead. Okay, I'm getting ready to pour everything here. I've got my melted composition in a cup here. I've got to get all this done before it gets too thick. Clean that off. And what I've got here is a smaller pipe uh, with a paper towel on the end that's soaked in oil, so I'll pass it through. My mold a couple of times just to make sure the inside of the mold is all oiled. And then I put on the small end. 
pull off my fingers and put the center core in. And then I'll pour my composition in there and hope it all behaves. Here goes. I should pour so you guys can see. There we go. Yeah, I think it's a bit lumpy. Hope I have enough here. I did it by weight. Get enough in there. cap in and hopefully there's enough. I'm going to tap it a couple of times to loosen the bubbles and there's a couple of little bubbles right on top here that I'd like to try and burst. They don't burst easily. And then I put this cap in. Thread it onto the, the shaft here too, which makes it a little tricky to get on. And there we go. Hey, just a tiny bit of um, composition came through the vent hole, so that means the mold is full, full, full. Well, that's good. Now we'll have to see how that hardens up. Well, now the time has come for the unveiling. Um, this sat in the fridge for a day or so to set properly and it's been out since this morning so it's warmed back up to room temperature. One thing I noticed is my vent hole here that the liquid has sucked back into that so there's at least a bit of an air bubble in the end of the roller that was formed. Now I don't know whether that's because the liquid shrank as it cooled or whether it's because after I poured it full the pipe expanded from the heat and so there was more volume and the liquid level dropped. A bit of a guessing game as to which, pro which ca what caused that. So I'm going to be pushing out on this end. Unfortunately, the way I made this mold is I have no way other than just gripping it of actually applying pressure to the pipe because the top of this top section is actually bigger than the pipe. So I might reduce the size of that next time so I can put some sort of collar against the pipe. So here goes. I'm going to try pushing this out and we'll have to see if it works. Something moved. I felt something move. Well, it's moved a couple of millimeters. <laughs> there it goes. I don't know if this is going to be successful, though. This is going to take a lot of work. surface is not perfectly smooth. It's got little pock marks in it. I don't know if that's because of air pockets or whether it's because the mold release I used, the oil I used, sort of formed droplets on the walls of the tube. It seemed to be forming a good coating when I put it on, but... And the cavity in the end That's about, I don't know, eight millimeters deep, quarter inch or so. 
So there's this rather large unsupported end here. Oh, well, there's my roller. It's nice and soft. Of course, it's slippery because it's still got oil on it. Just looking for flaws here. There are more of these little pockets at what was the bottom end. So that could be turbulence in pouring or some other cause. But in any case, I'm going to have to trim this end and unfortunately that will expose the cord. Or I can try patching it up by pouring a little more composition into it. Some other bubbles here too. Of course now I've been touching it so I've got oil all over the surface. But I will try patching it up, I think. So I'll just put this in this holder for now. I'd say that was more or less successful. Again, I'll have to try for uh, maybe less oil. Uh, perhaps preheating the tube would help too. Preheating, preheating this molding tube might help. So, that's Clean, clean the oil off the top there. There shouldn't be any other than the fact that I've been handling it now. I just poke my finger in here. So I'll poke, poke the bubbles open and see if I can fill the end of that or whether I just should recast because as it is it's pretty good but not perfect. Actually if I'm going to recast it I should put it back in the mold but I don't think I can get the mold back on. I suspect if I tried to get the mold back on, it would just ruin the whole thing. Oh, actually, it's going on pretty easily. Mm. Now at the last minute, it doesn't want to move anymore. What's happening is as I push on it, it bulges here. Oh well, that will still make it easier for me to fill in this end because now everything's confined except for of course the small matter that I haven't cleaned the oil off. It. So what I've decided to do about the bubbles in the end of this roller is I'm going to clean the oil off the end of it in here and I'm going to use a hot air gun to melt the end of the roller as it is and pour in some fresh composition. Hopefully everything will fuse together nicely and leave a seamless roller. So to get this oil out of here, I'm just using a cotton swab with some paint thinner on it. I'm just going to poke it around in all of these bubbles. And I've done this, this is the third time, third swab. And I'm just wiping around again with paint solvent and turning the swab around. I should get any liquid excess solvent, but I haven't found any yet. i use the swab to pick up the solvent again with whatever oil it's carrying away. Try not to let the saw get too fuzzy because I don't have all this fuzz embedded in the roller. The nice thing is the heat from the heat gun is going to evaporate any remaining solvent there. So the first thing to do is to use the heat gun and see if I can get this to start melting. Took, are we recording this? So that took a couple of minutes of heating. And it's sort of liquefied now. There's a couple of bubbles. I just want to try and pick up or pop. And you can tell it's liquid because there's stuff stuck to the end of the stick here. I'm going to get a container now to melt a little more of the composition to fill that in. Okay, so I have a little cup here for melting some more composition. It's just a little metal measuring cup. melt. This is the leftovers from the original melt. Basically the stuff that's stuck to the, stuck inside the pouring container that I used. And that's, that's way more than I need. So, more noise.
just a bit of a stir because I think there's going to be some hot spots. That's the remnant of the big lump, still not melted. Oh, a little more heat. Okay. Getting a little hot now, you can see it's steaming. That's probably a little overheated. Give it a good stir. So even despite all that heat, though, there's still sort of a solid glop in the middle. Let's see if I can disperse that just by stirring things. That's improving, getting better. Still sort of a glop there. heat it up a bit more now. It seems to be starting to set a bit again. Maybe the suspicion about this glop that it's actually a little bit of the stuff that doesn't want to dissolve again. And I don't know if basically every one of these little blobs that I have has a surface film that won't dissolve. I have to try and pick out of here, so I'm going to try and pick that out right now. I'll just dump it on the table saw here. See if everything else is nice and smooth. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I think by now my liquid here is no longer liquid. Indeed, it's it's tacky, but not liquid anymore. So you add a bit more heat. This in the frame. Okay, so that's almost liquid there. So time to pour some more in. Hopefully, there's not too many bubbles in it. probably have to trim the end of this now. And there we go. Well, this has had a day to harden again. And I have a nice, fairly smooth end. Because I didn't put an end cap in, though, there is a bit of a, a lip, a meniscus, that formed around the outside. So that little bit does not have any mold release against the uh, the tube. So I'm going to try and just pull it away from the wall of the tube a bit using a stick. And I might actually get to inject some oil in there too. Okay, that has all been loosened up. I'm just going to, uh, it's going to be going that way. So actually, there's not much point uh, adding more oil. I'm going to put this small plug in here. Oh, yeah, that feels a lot tighter than it was. Okay. There we go. 
and well, you can see a minor little dent there and a little dent there where the join occurred. And it's a little long because I just filled it by eye. Oh, it's almost covering the uh, the hole for the cotter pin that holds it into the frame. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use, we have a hot wire cutter in our store, and I'm going to use the hot wire cutter to trim this nice and square to the correct length so that it matches the other end. And then I'm going to call this one finished, at least as a first try, and I'll be able to try and correct my problems for the second one. I have to fill the mold a little more, so I'm going to put the end cap on. This vent hole is well filled, and that way as the liquid shrinks it'll have something to go in there to fill up the cavities. And the other thing is to go a little easier on the release agent. Another thing I'm going to do up in the store is uh, clean off this release agent with a lighter weight oil, because this stuff is actually quite thick. It's uh, uh, ISO 30 weight oil, I think, which is pretty heavy. Well, I've got the end of this roller trimmed now, so it's about an eighth inch shorter where the, the hole is for the cotter pin. So I'm going to start assembling this roller now. I'll put a cotter pin in one end. I'm not going to bend the cotter pins out just yet. And again, because the ends of this rod are a bit rounded and worn, and so are the holes in the frame, I'm going to add a washer on the outside of each cotter pin. So, I take the roller and I slip that end through there. Okay, interchange plans. Take out the cotter pin, put on the washer, slip it in the frame. the other washer on. And I have to push it a bit to compress the composition just a bit to get it on the frame. And now that's on the frame, I'll drop the washer down below the hole. Okay, I'm holding it way up in the air so you can't see it there. The washer is dropped against the frame and I'm holding the roller up so the cotter pin goes between the washer and the roller. And the same on this end. There we go. Now, now what's happening is the cotter pin is hitting the frame here when I spin it. So now I can bend the cotter pins open. There we go. Now I'm going to get the other core. This one seems to have succeeded, more or less, with a few lessons learned. And now I'm going to prepare the other core and cast it too. So I cast the second roller. Uh, I used a little more composition so it didn't uh, shrink right back into the vent hole. And again, it's been in the fridge for a while and now it's warmed back up to room temperature. So I will see if I can extract it. Getting it unstuck is the hardest part. Ugh. That one's tight. Let's see if I can just take off the top cover instead. Well, that came off okay. Now I just have to get the, uh, the roller to move in there. Again, there's still a bit of air bubbles porosity in the end. That's tight. And then I see I have another way of pushing that out. Success! Uh, using the press out in my shed, a frame, H frame press, I managed to press this out. I had to press it most of the way before I could pull it out. It was probably about this much left to go, actually I should say this much left to go before I could push it out manually. 
Now, it doesn't have the little bubble marks on it anymore. It's a bit scratched up from coming out without enough lubrication, though. So now that leaves the question of what got rid of the bubble marks. Was it the lack of lubrication, or was it because I preheated the mold? In any case, uh, I did get some bubbles around the top edge here the day before. So after removing this top end plug, I used my hot air gun and just blew into the end until everything melted down and smoothed out. And that means there's a little meniscus edge here that has to be trimmed off or melted off. So I'm going to try melting it with the hot air gun again just to get rid of the little edge that's there. It doesn't take very long for a very thin edge like that to melt. And that's enough. And then at what was the bottom here, one thing I can tell is I have a little a little closer to the cotter pin hole at this end here than at this end. And again that's because I was missing a little material at this end and at this end here and remelted it. This end here just has a little bit of tear in here. Again, probably because of insufficient lubrication. So again, I'm just going to give that a quick heat up to get rid of the real roughness in it. This roller is probably ready to go. It's got little white bits on it, but that's because it's already wiped it with a paper towel and the bits are sticking to it because it's not oily enough. So, that's uh, two rollers done. This is the second roller. I've got it all cleaned off and oiled a bit now and mounted in the roller frame. It's got a couple of little divots right at the end here where the, the composition tore a bit because it was stuck too much the to the mold. And then the original roar, which had all those little craters in it, what I did with that is I put it in my lathe at a really low speed, just so it rotated slowly, and used the heat gun to remount the surface of it. And that got rid of most of the craters, but it did leave a little, little ridge at each end, which I'm going to have to try and trim off with a razor blade or something. Now, other than that, there, two rollers ready to go.